Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming part three of my roasting makeup I purchased from Sephora in 2019 series. So if you haven't seen the other two videos, I'll go ahead and link them up in the cards or down in the description box for you guys. These videos are inspired by Butte Bean here on YouTube and I will go ahead and link her channel in the description as well so you guys can check her out. I really love her channel a whole lot. So without further blabbering, let's get into it. So I left off at August and we're gonna start off with September and go through the purchases all the way till the end of 2019. So the first thing I bought in September was on September 11th. I bought the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette on that day and it's a $129 palette. Now, I love my Metropolis palette. It's so funny. The other day I got a question in my DMs from a subscriber that asked, okay, I have a Sephora gift card. Should I get the Natasha Denona Gold or should I get the Metropolis? And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. It's like asking to pick between my two favorite children and I still think the Metropolis is the one to go for because you're getting more shades and she's got her cream to powder formula in there. If you like color, like she's got some beautiful matte greens in there. She's got beautiful blues, shimmery reds, and then also a bunch of neutrals. So even though it doesn't have that lime chrome shade, which is like my favorite thing about the Natasha Gold palette, I think the Metropolis still packs a huge punch and is way more value for money. The other thing I told my subscriber was that if you really, really wanted to get the Natasha Denona Gold but you didn't have the budget for it, Alter Ego does have a pretty decent dupe for the palette. So basically you can have the best of both worlds, like spend your big gift card on the Metropolis because you're gonna get a bunch of more shades. And then since you like the color story of the gold, just go with the dupe. But <laughs> in my opinion, you should definitely have both of those palettes because they're that good. But you know, life is uh, currently uncertain and it's probably not the best financial advice for me to tell you to go spend like 200 plus dollars on eyeshadow palettes right now, but I love both of those palettes so, so much. The next thing I picked up on 917 was the Natasha Denona Glow Gold Highlighter Duo for $42 and the Natasha Denona Mini Gold Palette. I was feeling personally attacked by Natasha Denona, I think, that month because she was coming out with so, so many good things. The Mini Gold is definitely my favorite mini palette from Natasha Denona. I love that color scheme so, so much. Unfortunately, the Gold Highlighting Duo was not a favorite of mine and I ended up actually returning that and now that duo is on sale which I'm not saying that things that are on sale usually mean that the quality isn't as good but sometimes it does mean that it means that the product did horribly in stores and now they're trying to get rid of it so yeah happy I don't own that that was way too much money for the nothingness that it was doing to my skin so I got rid of it so the next order was on November 26th where I bought the Norvina 2 and 3. Those were $60 each. If you watched my last video, I had bought the first one in August and I kind of said I bought that one because it was on sale. And I basically ended up with all three. I did a swatch party video with my Norvina palettes and basically I realized I really didn't like the formula of them. They definitely work like a pigment and I know I have palettes in my collection that are pigments, not eyeshadows, but I still like my pigments to blend. I hate packing on shadows, so they're just not for me. I know people love the Norvina formula, and that's okay. We can all agree to disagree, but it's just not my favorite. So I did end up getting rid of all of those palettes, and I definitely learned not to just buy things because I'm like a completionist and definitely something I'm working on in 2020. So the next purchase was on 926. I bought the Pat McGrath Blitz Astral Quad for $65. So this was her blue toned holiday quad that she came out with. And I was really excited because I hadn't really seen Pat McGrath do those shades before so I was kind of excited for the blue and the green and they're nice but 
I don't know, I can justify her bigger palettes because they have such a beautiful color story, but this palette, I kind of regret now looking back having bought it because it's not something I reach for. If I want to wear a Pat McGrath shadow, I just end up automatically reaching for my bigger palettes from her. So kind of wish I hadn't bought that one, but I do own it. And then on 1010, I bought the ABH Holiday Glitter Kit, which was like an iridescent glitter kit. I ended up not keeping that because I bought the Terra Moon Chameleon shadows and I decided that shadows work better for me than glitters in my inner corner so I didn't open it or anything I ended up just sending that back to Sephora because I didn't need it and I also bought the Anastasia Beverly Hills mini loose highlighter set which I really like because I had bought peach fizz in the August sale and I really liked it so I bought the set because I wanted minis of that loose highlighter formula so I really like that and then I bought the Carly Bible palette which was a collab with Carly Bible and ABH again was getting so much heat for having had so many palettes launch like back to back to back. I personally didn't think it was a big deal because you know you're gonna buy what you want I think personally but yeah they got into a lot of heat for coming out with so many things one after the other. I feel like the Carly Bible palette wasn't as good quality as the Jackie Ina palette. I've only used my ABH Carly Bible palette one time, so we're gonna work on that this year. I'm gonna try and use that at least a few more times on or off camera, but I think that palette is currently on sale at Sephora too, if you have been eyeing it, because I think it's limited edition, so it's gonna go away soon. Okay, so on 1015, I bought my Huda Nude Obsession Rich Palette for $29. I really like that palette. I always say here on my channel that the Huda Mini palettes have been hit or miss for me. So the fact that the Rich one was such a hit, and my friend Angie and Amy, they bought, one bought the Light and one bought the Medium, and I bought the Rich. And we did a collab video with those three palettes, and that was super duper fun. And you guys really had a great response to that. And I was just personally so happy that I bought a mini Huda palette and, and it had worked out and I hadn't had any trouble getting it to work. So that was fantastic for me. So really, really love that guy. And then 1016, I bought the Lunar Beauty Moonspell palette because I'm a savage. So I bought the Moonspell palette full price for $49. I believe that palette is on sale or something like that. Or maybe it's his other palette, Strawberry Dreams palette is on sale. And I've been hearing rumors in my comment section that Lunar Beauty is leaving Sephora. I'm not sure. Obviously, I'm not a Sephora insider, so I have no clue. But let me know if you guys know anything about that. I personally like that influencer brands are available in stores like Alta and Sephora just because I don't like to pay for shipping. And I want to be able to exchange or return something if it doesn't work for me or I have some kind of reaction or some shit like that. <laughs> I really like the convenience of being able to buy something like that from Sephora. So hopefully it's not going away, but let me know what you guys know about that. So on 1101, I bought the Youth of the People Antioxidant Cleanser for $36. This is my morning cleanser. I think it's my second or third bottle, but I use it every morning to cleanse my face. And the one time I tried to go without it, I missed it so much. So even though it kind of pains me to spend $36 on a face wash, I really enjoy it. And so I buy it and use it sparingly. During Sephora sales, I like to stock up on it in case I'm getting close to running out of it. So really like that stuff and then I also picked up the Biosan's 100% Sugar Care Squalene and that is $48 and I think that's the I bought the Squalene oil I didn't like it I didn't feel like it was doing anything to hydrate my skin so I did end up taking that back and then I bought the Sephora Collection Glitter Mascara just for fun it was 10 bucks and I thought hey for the holidays let me try it out. I still have it back there. I haven't used it too, too much. I should really pull that back out and try it out again and see. I think it'd be kind of fun to play with it with these neutral eyeshadow looks because it's like a gold mascara. It's okay. It was just something for fun. And then I bought the ABH Norvina Mini 2 palette for $29. So that was the green mini Norvina that she came out with. I thought that was nice. I like the quality of the minis a little bit better than the larger palettes, but it was still a little bit dull. So 
I did end up decluttering that palette from my collection. I didn't really want to keep that around. On 1104, I bought the Cover FX Blush Duo in Soft Peach. This one was a bad purchase. It was on sale, so I picked it up because everyone talks about the Cover FX Duo in Soft Peach. Unfortunately, not tan girl friendly, so I did end up having to send that back to Sephora because I didn't want to keep it. And then on 1111, I bought two Mason Margiela Republica perfumes. These were definitely inspired by Angie. I bought Jazz Club and Under the Lemon Tree. $30 each, totally worth it. If you guys have not smelled those fragrances, you really, really need to. As soon as the quarantine is over, go to your Sephora and smell the Mason Margiel fragrances because they smell exactly like what they describe. They have a scent called Lipstick. There's one called Beach Day or something. Just so many good fragrances. L Under the Lemon Tree and Jazz Club are chef's kiss. Like I love both of those fragrances. I really want to own them in a full size, but they're so spendy. So I reined it in and bought them in the travel size. So I'm very, very happy about that. And then I also bought the ABH Dip Brow in Ebony for $21. I had never used the Dip Brow, so I did pick it up. I used it for a little while, but I haven't used it in a while. My brows are just kind of like doing their own thing. I just put in a little bit of the Essence Brow stuff in it, and I just like let them be. The last video I filmed, I completely forgot to do my brows, and I still thought they looked fine on camera, so... I think I just need to leave my brows alone. <laughs> like, I just need to let them like live their best life because I have naturally pretty thick brows. So they really don't require that much like maintenance. I don't really have to draw on like brow strokes or anything because they're so full on their own. And then on 1216, I bought the Biosan Squalene and Marine Algae Eye Cream for $54. I heard so many good things about Biosans, but honestly, Again, I just struggle with eye creams. I feel like no matter how much I spend on them, I never really see any magical differences in my under eye. I really was hoping that this one was going to be the magical hydrating concealer that I had been looking for. Not the case, so I still have it and I try to use it, but I don't love it by any means. I wouldn't say you need to run out and buy it. Um, and then I bought a Laneige Cream Skin Toner. You guys know it's my favorite toner. I bought one. In the last video that I made, I was talking about it as well. I have one right here. I just picked up another one because I ran out. Um, I really, really love this guy. And I keep one down here and one in my master bath because I use it every time I wash my face. Love that so, so much. And then my last purchase from Sephora in 2019 was the Tatcha Kisu Lip Mask on 12-29, which was the day after my birthday. I remember the Kisu mask when it originally came out and I was like, I'm not spending that kind of money on a lip mask. And I don't know, just something about it really attracted me to it. It just looks so hydrating and juicy and jelly-like. It didn't seem like Tatcha was planning on restocking it anytime soon. So I kind of forgot about it, put it in the back of my mind. And then when they relaunched it, I snapped one up. And again, I like it, but it's not like the most revolutionary treatment on planet Earth. If you guys can't afford it, I wouldn't get too hung up on it. It's it's nice, but it's not like the end-all be-all of lip masks, if that makes any sense. So that is everything for roasting my 2019 Sephora purchases. Let me know your thoughts down in the description box. Do you guys think I should go back and see if I can do all of 2018? I could do more videos like this. So let me know if you guys would be interested to see that because I personally think this is really fun. Okay guys, well that is everything. Like I said, I will go ahead and leave some eyeshadow palette videos from me at the end here so you guys can keep watching. Thank you so, so much and I will see you in my next one soon. Bye guys!